welcome to lecture number 33 and uh, in our last class I told you about how to handle AC circuits uh, just like DC circuit analysis and how mesh analysis can be carried out. Similarly, uh, nodal analysis let me uh, just write down the equations no question of further deriving it. Uh, suppose you have a circuit like this, I am now drawing impedances uh, as boxes suppose Z1 bar here is uh, one voltage source, uh, there is another impedance here and there is another voltage source here. Okay, AC and there is uh, Z3, Z1, Z2, this is uh, Z3, they could be RL or pure R or pure or a combination of R and capacitance and so on and there is another source here, say minus and plus. and here is a source and here is another resistance here say z0 and uh, this is the circuit and there may be another branch here hmm? like uh, another impedance z4 and another source plus minus like this. Let the sources be called E1, E2, E3 and let me put another impedance here Z5 and this is say E5. Okay, this is how the circuit is given, this is say E6. So, all the impedances I will be knowing their values, source voltages are also known, I want to calculate the currents. Now, similarly here one can apply the mesh analysis, number of meshes are 3, I 1, I 2, I 3 that I have described. Now, I will tell you how to apply, write down the nodal equations, node voltages how to find, find out. So, first of all you mark the nodes 1, 2, 3 and 4. There are 4 nodes, one of them you call it O reference node and other three are A, B and C. Our target will be to know the value of VAO, VBO and VCO. So, writing down the equations of, uh, so KCL at node A, KCL at node A will be uh, the coefficient of VAO, it will be sum of the reciprocal of all the impedances connected to o, 1 by Z0 plus 1 by Z1 plus 1 by Z4. This will be VA0, all will be phasors here. Similarly, coefficient of VB0 will be common impedance between A and B that is Z1 minus 1 over Z1 into V B0. And coefficient of V C will be the impedance in this branch. So, that is Z4, so minus 1 over Z4 into V C0. And this will be equal to the Dimensionally, the right hand side should be currents and source should be involved. 
So E1 is a source connected to A. So it will be E1 by Z0, E1 by Z0. So it will be E1 by Z0 plus sign because polarity is such it drives current towards node A. Similarly, E6 by Z4 that is also plus plus E6 by Z4 and E2 also is connected to node A. So, polarity is such it should be E2 by Z1. This will be equation 1. At node B, at node B, KCL similarly will be coefficient of VB0 will be sum of reciprocal of all the impedances connected to B that is Z1, Z2 and Z3, Z3 into VB0 and coefficient of VA0 will be common impedance connected between A and B preceded by a negative sign plus and coefficient of V C 0 will be minus 1 by Z 3 into V C 0 and this will be equal to uh, all the sources. So, E 3 connected to B E 3 by Z 2 will be current in this direction. So, that will be positive. all are complex number E 3 by Z 2 plus 2 B plus sign. Then uh, this is minus, this is plus. Then uh, E 5 uh, is not connected. So, only this source and this source E 2 is connected, but E 2 you see minus is connected to B. So, it will be minus E 2 by Z 1 that is all to B only these two sources are involved. So, this is how second equation looks like and the third equation is at C at node C at node C it will be uh, coefficient of C will be 1 by Z 3 plus 1 by Z 5 plus 1 by Z 4. So, it will be 1 by Z 3 plus 1 by Z 5 plus 1 by Z 4 into V C 0 and coefficient of V A 0 yes there is a connection between A and C. So, minus 1 by Z 4 into V A 0, Z 4 is the impedance here. Similarly, coefficient of V V 0 will be simply minus 1 over Z 3 into V V 0 and plus this term and this should be equal to currents here source. So, E 5 by Z 5 but negative is connected to minus C. So, it will be equal to minus E 5 divided by Z 5 bar. There is a source also connected here E 6 to C. So, minus this is also minus E 6 by Z 4 that is all. So, these three equations just like your DC circuit analysis except that all the numbers will be complex in nature. Then you calculate by any method you like use your calculators, but coefficients will be complex. But the fear that we had got if it is RL circuit there is complex circuit like this several sources are present. So, you have to write down the differential equation to uh, to solve for currents 
that is not necessary. If you are only interested in the steady state currents, you go to the complex domain, solve it. These are algebraic equation, no differential equations, calculate it. You will be able to calculate also the powers at various branches and so on. So, all the things that we have applied in DC circuit can be applied there also. Similarly, uh, uh, there may be a current source, time bearing current source. In case of DC circuit, what do, do I see? If there is a current source having an internal resistance R only, then uh, if uh, there is a load resistance connected here, then this circuit is equal to this circuit. You can always go to R and here is your AB. We have seen that in DC circuit and here is your R. Or if you have a battery in series with some resistance R, if a load is connected, if you have a battery and here is your load resistance, this is nothing but equal to can be thought of as a current source E by R and in parallel with R and uh, these are the load terminals where R is there. This we are doing in case of DC circuit and all things we did earlier. Here I am telling if you have a current source which is sinusoidal in nature, so it can be represented as a phasor and if there is an impedance here, and here you connect some load impedance, then this will be simply equal to an impedance in series that is z bar and here you can think it is a voltage source that is I bar into z bar open circuit voltage and then you have the load impedance z l a b this is also a and b and conversely if you have a so a current source in parallel with an impedance can be considered to be a voltage source in series with this impedance and then your load across a b similarly if you have a source AC source will have as its internal resistance as an ideal AC source E bar and A B is your load terminal and here you connect a load impedance Z L. Then this is this can be thought of as a current source whose value will be E bar by Z bar in parallel with an impedance Z bar and then your A and B and this is the load impedance. So, if it is AC circuit and I am only interested in steady state currents, powers, etcetera, then phasor notations can be used and can be used with ease. Only thing complexity burden increases a bit, increase a bit, but uh, no, 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 nothing like solving differential equations will come in the way. It is all linear equations. So, uh, 
please uh, uh, remember these things. This is how you will be going. And you have uh, solved several circuits with complex impedances. Now, I will today in this lecture, we will now summarizing all the lectures that we have done so far. You are now in a position, uh, if it is not a sinusoidal thing, okay, differential equation is to be written. You cannot avoid that. And voltage source can be anything. And I told you how to solve such circuit earlier, say Vt, any voltage source, RL circuit, RL circuit. So, coming back to general circuit approach, okay, supply voltage could be anything, need not be sinusoidal, Vt. And we found out the currents. Of course, to find out these currents, you have to write down differential equations or um, uh, do something, if V t happens to be sinusoidal or D c, then uh, there is some relief in getting the forced response quickly, those we have discussed. For example, the current in the circuit we have calculated so many times is E by R into 1 minus E to the power minus R by L into T. Uh, if V t is equal to a battery constant voltage, we have seen this with of course, initial with the assumption that I 0 minus was equal to 0. Achha. Now, today what I will tell you that uh, this, this circuit The, the solution of this circuit could be thought of like this. A switch, this is how we were drawing this circuit E and I told you I close this circuit at T equal to 0. Okay. But what I am now telling you is that this circuit, the, this voltage can be described using some unit step function and you can this, this, this is same as telling that I have applied a voltage what is called unit step voltage E into U T and draw the circuit like this. We will define what is unit step function. A unit step function is drawn like this. It is 0 for t less than 0, I am closing this switch and then for t greater than 0, it is E. It is not unit step, it is it has got an amplitude, but the magnitude is constant. Whereas, unit step will be like this. this is u t and this is obviously, this function is e into u t where e is a constant number, this is t equal to 0. <coughs> so, if I say there is a circuit where this voltage v t is e into u t, I mean that this voltage has been applied to the circuit. For t less than 0, the applied voltage was 0. So, this circuit will look like for t less than 0, this circuit will look like R L. This you please uh, follow me very carefully. For t less than 0, applied voltage is 0 because E into U t. So, this I will show like a short circuit, there was no voltage existing. One may think that okay, it is open circuit, why do not you show, but my input voltage is 0 to indicate that I say. Although I have not discussed, you must understand that in an RL circuit, there 
the inductance is present. Therefore, some flux somewhere may link it and produce some current in this circuit. But my applied voltage is zero. That is the more important point. If you show it as open circuit, then that voltage will come here. So, input voltage I am I will define between these two points which is 0 means shorted and for t greater than 0 for t greater than 0 the circuit will look like R L and here as if a constant voltage plus minus e this is the situation. So, this is how if uh, some function is written. So, for for t less than 0 voltage applied is 0 from minus infinity to 0 it was 0 like that. Even inductor had some current that must have dissipated in R energy storage initially long back. So, initial current will be so, given and you can solve the current, but expression of the current for t greater than 0 you will get the same equation r i plus l d i d t is equal to you write u e u t. I am interested to get the solution for t greater than 0 therefore, e into u t is nothing but e itself for t greater than 0 got the point. Therefore, this is how one of the important function called unit step function emulates a this situation where you want to connect a battery across R and L. This function is one of the very popular functions. At t equal to 0, I am not sure what is the magnitude of this unit step function. So, this is unit step function. It is not defined at t equal to 0. t 0 minus it was 0, sure. t 0 plus it is e and it will be e for any time to come that is the thing of a unit step function. Now, in my previous lectures earlier quite earlier to the discussion we are having about AC circuit I told you while writing down the differential equation right hand side is the voltage that is R i always uh, bring one circuit in your mind to understand the thing. This was my V t suppose R l circuit R l this is your V t. It could be any function of time now need not be sinusoidal that is why I am in time domain I cannot go to phasor domain. Okay, if this is the thing I have to find out this current I R L. So, I will write down the differential equation and solve it and I will demand some initial currents must be provided to me I 0 minus etcetera and uh, switching I will do at t equal to 0. This is how we were uh, we have been tell, telling to you and then at that time I told this right hand side I put a restriction so far and told that this this, this is the excitation or input voltage excitation or input voltage and so far whatever I have done solve these differential equations with the assumption that that V t exclude impulse for V t. V t is not an impulse is not an impulse voltage.
and if Vt is not impulse voltage, we established I0 minus is equal to I0 plus. You recall for an inductive circuit, what should have been the current in the inductor at T equal to 0 minus at T equal to 0, you did something. So, I0 plus will be equal to I0 minus, that is what we have been telling so far. Now, I will not exclude this impulse function. So, what happens? What happens? If an impulse if an voltage impulse is applied to an RL circuit to an RL circuit this impulse voltage usually denoted by delta t as we have denoted unit step voltage as ut this is the impulse voltage mathematically denoted by this then the question comes what is an impulse voltage i must know like unit step voltage was defined like this zero for t any t less than zero then it steps up to a high voltage v this is your time axis now what is an impulse voltage uh, uh, that is very interesting. You see, suppose you have a voltage waveform like this, a rectangular voltage waveform. Like this, suppose, and. Uh, this interval are you getting this voltage waveform it means that for v less than this time it was 0 for v greater than this time it was 0 but for v between this point and this point there was some step voltage sort of thing a rectangular pulse voltage so so this is a rectangular pulse voltage vt is supposed like this then uh, the question is this one suppose i say this is h by 2 or or i will use a okay this is h by 2 and this is plus h by 2 so what is the width of the rectangle h this is a rectangular pulse rectangular pulse as your vt so i will sketch it this way this is the rectangular pulse a voltage of this sort which is otherwise zero for t greater than h by 2 it is zero for t less than minus h by 2 it is zero here is t equal to zero this is time axis. So, it is a rectangular pulse voltage and I have taken such a rectangular pulse voltage whose height is h 1 by h let us take it. Let us take a special rectangular pulse whose height is 1 by h and this is h got the point. Suppose uh, this h is equal to 2, if h equal to 2, I will take the height to be half. So, so it is like this. For example, if this is plus 1, if this is minus 1, this width of this is 2 and I will take the height half. If this is uh, 1.5 minus 1.5, 3, I will take the height to be one third. Achha, 
what is the area of this rectangle? Half into 2 area of this pulse, area under the pulse, area under the pulse is equal to half into 2 is equal to 1. So, as a general case if you take this is plus h by 2 minus h by 2 width will be h and height of this pulse I will try to maintain 1 by h a. Then what will be the area under this curve? So, area under this rectangular pulse pulse will be equal to rectangle. So, width into height. So, so h is the width and 1 by h 1 by h and that will be 1. Now, you choose any value of h this will be always true that is also fine no problem. But now, I am telling you one very interesting thing what I will be doing is that let to this rectangular pulse I will try to see h I will try to make h tends to 0. Then what will be the fate of this rectangle rectangular pulse it will be like this. this rectangular pulse will be base will be coming thinner and height will be coming larger and larger. This is what is going to happen to this uh, this is time. So, h is reduced 1 by h is this one height of the rectangle will blow up and base will try to collapse. This is what it will be is not as and as you say that h tends to 0, but really not equal to 0 that means, uh, I will not make h equal to 0, but as uh, small as I can here there is here there is here like 0 minus and 0 plus. Then the height of this rectangle will go up like anything it will become a thin strip and the height h will tend to infinity then if h tends to 0 the height of the rectangle will try to go to infinite infinitely large its height will be as h is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller to whatever extent small 10 to the power minus 68, <laughs> but the height will then go up. But the speciality of this rectangle is this if this is h I will make it 1 by h the area under this curve which now becomes almost like a line will always remain 1. Okay. The height going to infinite base is collapsing to 0 but the area under the curve remains same. Now, such a function is called an impulse function as against time nothing is there for t less than 0, nothing is there for t greater than 0, but at t equal to 0 that is between 0 minus and 0 plus there appears a, uh, a value of the function which is infinitely large.
Therefore, what should I say about this delta t? So, coming to this next page, I am telling this part you listen carefully. So, here is your time axis. I am telling that at t equal to 0, there is an impulse. And this impulse is shown by an arrow because infinite you cannot show the magnitude, it is delta t. So, I will try to describe the function as delta t is equal to 0 if t not equal to 0, t other than 0 value the function functional value of delta t is very well defined, it is delta t 0, t greater than 0 it is also 0, but at t equal to 0 the value of the function is infinitely large, what to write? Going to infinity, going to infinity. I cannot really define what will be the height of the rectangle as h tends to 0 as I told you, but about this thing I am certain delta t equal to 0 elsewhere for t less than 0. But I can say one thing about delta t another thing I can say that is delta t dt between t equal to 0 minus and 0 plus this is equal to 1 because area under the curve is 1. So, I am collapsing h height is increasing 1 by h, but no matter for any chosen value of h the area under the curve is 1 therefore, this impulse however, high it becomes so long h you are not putting equal to 0, but, but collapsing it as close as 0, 0 minus to 0 plus, the area under the curve has to be 1. So, about the delta t function I can say its amplitude at t equal to 0, I cannot define, cannot be defined. cannot be defined infinitely large. Value of delta t for t other than 0 defined it is 0 always 0 and then I say okay, value of delta t is not defined it is infinitely large at t equal to 0, but this integral is true the area under this thin rectangle as thin as you can think of is always 1. So, such a function is called an impulse function. For example, our uh, see any reasonable function of time will be like this t it is defined at t equal to this much what is the value at t equal to 0 this is the value of the function any function x t at t equal to minus 5 it is this much that is how we are used to to deal with function. But here is a function which looks like very simple because its uh, functional value at any value of t here 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 all are 0 flat all are 0 flat. Only at one point it uh, makes its presence felt that is at t equal to 0, such that delta t tends to infinity and this integral is true around this origin 0 minus to 0 plus area is finite and such a function is called an impulse function. Can we 
have an impulse function in the laboratory really you cannot generate an impulse function ideal impulse function in the laboratory no it is not possible then question comes why then study this impulse function we will see very interesting features about the impulse function and why it is necessary to find out the impulse response of a any of any given circuit people still on pen and paper i can of course find out for example in this circuit as i told you if you have an circuit and if vt is equal to delta t what will be the nature of the current can i find it okay in the laboratory you cannot do it because impulse function is ideal impulse function you cannot find but on pen and paper no one prevents you study and what about the impulse function if such a function which is like this is applied to the circuit what will be the nature of the current will the current will become impulse or what else those things we will discuss very interesting topics it is please this is somewhat new word because earlier whatever i have told you was uh, we were really developing the uh, common ground basic grounds based on which we can now talk uh, with advanced topics like this so impulse function an impulse voltage if applied to a given circuit what will be the response how to find out the currents this is the topic of discussion so for that i must know what an impulse function is and about this you should not have any doubt what it is looking at is impulse function is one of the simplest function it does not exist anywhere here for t less than 0 here for t greater than 0 only there is uh, some impulse function is present at a single point it looks like close to a single point 0 minus to 0 plus with what property what will be the functional value no i cannot say it is infinitely large what about the functional value of this function zero everywhere t greater than 0 plus 0 t less than 0 minus 0 but about these things this is the useful information the area under the impulse function will be equal to unit impulse function will be equal to 1 we will uh, further study this in my next lecture thank you